my friends, Paul here in the Rojobi Music Workshop and welcome to part 8 of the Japanese Sanshin and Shamisen build project. Okay, so uh, in the previous episode, um, which was basically an unscheduled recording, um, I was showing you how um, I was shaping the necks. Uh, so this is the one that had already been done at that stage. And I also did this one. So this is the bigger one for the chamisen. Um, now, unlike this one, the sanjin, you can see we've got the, the shoulders here. Um, I actually haven't got them on this one, uh, which is the, the actual proper way of, of doing them. Um, I decided to, you know, just, just um, do it two different ways slightly different and um, you know just just to see which turns out the better because I am currently making these two and I have decided I am going to make another two I was only going to make another one um, but um, I've managed to find enough materials to make two more um, which I will probably not do on camera because I'm showing most of the the process for these builds uh, for these two so but when you know when I come to do the other the other two if I do anything different I will make a video of that to show uh, the differences between you know some of some of the things I'm doing uh, between these uh, four different instruments so I am going to make two shamisen two sanjin so the shamisen the bigger ones two of those and two of the small in, smaller sanjins uh, so it's still going to be quite a long process. Um, so as I said in the previous video, I shaped the neck. It's, it's. The, I mean, the first one I'd done is about ninety-five percent complete. I'd say this one is about ninety. And I'll put the. Uh, I, I should have showed this really how I how I made these holes. Uh, but basically, you know, just just marked them out and drilled them, and then used my um, tapered. Oh, what's it called? <laughs> Rima. Oh my God, what's wrong with me lately? To you know, to to taper the holes. Um, now, this is just an ordinary reamer. It's not a specific one for instrument building. However, I have ordered a proper violin one. It's a little bit more expensive than this one, but the difference between this one and the violin one is that the taper on this is, um, how can I say, sharper than the violin one. The violin one tapers more gradually than this one. So that will be more correct for the tuning pegs. So I'll show all that in a later video. I'm not at that stage yet. The stage I'm at now is uh, fitting the neck in the body. So um, I have done a little bit of the work off camera so basically what I did is I drilled a hole in the top and then I have squared it. Uh, so I just drilled, drilled a normal round hole with a normal drill bit and with using um, a couple of different chisels and things like that I've managed to get the hole square. Um, the downside of using the chisels is A it does take quite a long time um, I mean, the ones I, I was using was this uh, five mil chisel and this fourteen mil chisel. Now they're very sharp because I, I recently sharpened them, so that as far as that side of it is concerned, they they, they were doing their job. The trouble is, I was having to chisel through this way, and then on the inside, I kept getting uh, chip outs. Um, the, the back of the, the wood uh, chipping out every time I, I ran the chisel through and I, there wasn't really any other way of doing it because I can't I physically can't get the chisel in from the inside to go through that way um, it just isn't enough room to get the right angle to do it so you know it was taking quite a long time I was getting a few problems with the chip out but I persevered and I got to a certain stage and, and I thought, you know, I, I've got to stop because I'm going to, you know, I'm going to ruin this, this body with all the chip out and everything. 
Now, one second, the other, the other tools I was try, uh, well, I had available was this standard normal size wood rasp, which is too big to go in the hole. Okay, so that, uh, that ruled that one out straight away. Now the only other rasp I have, which is small enough to fit in the hole, is this one, but it's round. Which isn't much good for making square holes. So, you know, I was, I was trying with the chisels, it wasn't working all that well. Didn't really have any other way of, of uh, making the hole. So I got to a certain stage and then stopped and thought, you know, I, I need some different tools to do this job. So I ordered some more tools. So what I got was this set of miniature rasps. And these are fantastic. So uh, they're what, seven inches long or so? And um, I don't know, what's that? I'm going to say in old in, in uh, new money, 10, 10 millimetres thereabouts, so about three eighths of, of an inch. <coughs> <coughs> so what took me a couple of hours to get to a certain stage on this hole with the chisels and having problems, I then continued with this new rasp, it's a flat one with a, a square end, and within two or three minutes I'd made the hole big enough to get the shaft through right to the bottom of the body. So let me just show you that, make sure we get the right neck. Is it that one or that one? It's that one. Yes. So, putting the uh, square peg in the square hole. Okay, so now it goes in that far and gets to the bottom of the body. And literally, to, you know, to get it from, it was about halfway, and then to get it to the rest of the way, making that hole bigger with that rasp, it took me two or three minutes. <coughs> so those, my new set of mini rasps are going to be absolutely ideal for this part of the build. So there's a set of six, that, but the one I was using is this flat uh, square ended file. Uh, it also comes with a flat file that comes to a point at the end. Um, and there's that one, and then that one again, which does the same thing, but it, one side is curved. We've got a curved side there. Uh, I'm not going to get them all out, but there's also a round file, a triangle file, and a square file. So those are going to be absolutely spot on for this job and save so much time. It's unbelievable. So, so that's, that's the one I was using and really did the job really well. Now, I didn't only buy that set. I didn't only buy this set of rasps. I bought another set, even smaller. <laughs> These things are fantastic. I mean, look, the same type of file, so the flat square-ended one, but he's that big. <laughs> These are barely six inches long. Tiny, tiny, I mean, the other blade is probably 10 mil. This is probably, Mm, six mil or something like that wide and a full set of those uh, in the same so we've got the the flat ends the, the curved round square and triangle rasps but in a smaller size so I've got those two sets and uh, yeah these are going to be the things for this job so uh, not the smaller ones I'm not going to need those for this particular job but they will get used trust me they'll get used a lot for, for various other projects so um, you know I like I said I have I have started this job off camera um, it was basically like I said drill a, drill a circle hole with, with a normal drill bit and then you know uh, make the hole square which I'm now doing with the rasps and it's so much easier oh and the other thing is um, I bought bought these this new set of rasps and I've also got a set of metal files in the same style it's probably the same manufacturer so I've got two sets of the rasps and a set of the, the metal files as well and, and I will use these in these square holes just to tidy up at the end after the rasping so I've got everything I need there to do this little job which is great 
So, um, the crucial part of getting this uh, neck in the body is, first of all, it needs to be in the centre. You can see my, my centre line here, and it runs straight through the centre there. But you may also see that the, the hole is off-centre this way. It's more this way, so you've got, you know, that, <laughs> that much meat there and that much meat there. And that corresponds to uh, this step here. So, um, you know, with, with some measuring, I got it to the point where when it goes through, let's just get that straight, you can see that it's pretty much lined up with the body. Uh, okay, so you can see if I got it straight, that almost exactly lines up with the body there. So, that's the critical part of this, making sure that that hole is in the right position for the neck to be in the right position, um, i.e. lined up with the body there so that it's basically a straight line. But, uh, as I've said before, this neck will have to, let's just get that straight, will have to come back so that you get this tension on the strings. Um, also, I've noticed, looking down it, there is a really tiny tiny twist so it's not quite not quite centered in you know sort of rotation wise so I am going to have to adjust that hole a little bit so basically twist the neck round a little bit so I've got the neck down to touching the bottom end of the body inside and off camera I, I lined it all up so that it was right you know side to side and also the angle back and I've made a mark uh, inside okay right here so you can see a, a basic square there and the center of that square so that's where the bottom hole is going to be so what I need to do is let me just turn the camera around a bit and if I just angle down and then zoom in being careful not to switch the camera off <laughs> okay and I just zoom in a bit that should be enough okay so let me put that other neck away so that I don't keep picking up the wrong one and let me just zoom out a little bit okay yeah okay so now when I put the neck into the body you see the shaft going through touching the bottom there and you know I've met I've lined everything up and made sure I've got that mark there where the hole is going to be. So, um, it's, it's, it would be very difficult to, to mark that on the outside. I've got nothing to line it up with. Uh, you know, I do have the centre line on there, but as far as, you know, uh, this way or this way, it would be very difficult to line that up. So I'm going to have to drill the hole from the inside. So, the way I'm going to do that is, uh, first of all, get a block of scrap wood to go under the body, so that when I drill through, it doesn't split out. And I need my long drill bit. Okay, so, uh, so I'm going to be going through this hole and, and drill the hole through from that way. So that way it'll be much more accurate. <coughs> now... Measuring the, the bottom end of this shaft, uh, you know, width across, it's about 11 and a half to 12 mil. So I've got a 10 mil drill bit here. <coughs> I do have an eight as well. Actually, I have a six as well in these. Um, but I just think it's not necessary to go that small. 10 mil is, is about right. And I've, I've got the center marked and I've, I've used my... Where is it? My automatic centre punch to put a little indentation in there. So, it's now time to drill a hole. So I'm going to mount my drill bit in my cordless. I'm going to keep it on speed one. I don't want to go too fast with this. And here we go. So the good thing is going through this top hole, um, it will keep my drilling more or less centred. Let's just find that indentation so it will keep the drill bit more or less centered and as long as I eyeball it and keep 
the drill bit in the center of the hole here, that, that hole will be perfectly aligned. So, here we go. Oh, that's fast, okay. Right, now luckily that's just started to poke through there. So, to um, even more eradicate the possibility of of chip out, I'm going to take the drill out and go through from this side. Okay, so I'll draw that back out. Ooh. Okay, so you can see the, the inside of the hole there. It's a little bit untidy, but that, that's fine because I'm going to be filing it out anyway. And you can just see where the drill bit started to come through there. So now I can go through from the outside and eliminate as much chip out as possible. But being careful, these drill bits are really sharp. Okay, well that's turned out really nicely. You can see how well that's centered on the center line. I'm having to hold it at an angle for the because of the light, but I think you can see that that hole ended up right in the middle of that center line. So I know that's perfectly aligned. Okay, so that's the hole drilled, and you can see where I marked the square inside. You see the hole is inside that square, so I know I haven't messed that up, <laughs> which is good. <coughs> so, <coughs> I know it's not going to fit yet, but I just want to uh, put the neck back in the body. Make sure I get it the right way around. And uh, yeah, I can see that that's not going to fit in that hole yet. It's a wrong shape anyway, but so now I'm going to just start with my new rasps to open that hole up and square it off. Okay, so I don't think that one that one I was using before will fit just yet. No, it's a little bit too wide, so I'm going to go with, let me see, I think this triangle one is about right for this job, um, because I know that all of these three are too wide to get into the hole, and the, obviously the, the round one is no good, um, the square one is quite small, so this triangle one seems to be the right one for this job. I mean, I say triangle, but it's got three flat sides and they're a bit wider than the square and the round anyway, but a little bit narrower than the final one I will be using. Okay, so, uh, it's gonna be easier if I actually rasp it from inside because I can see where the square is supposed to be. So, uh, let's see, I need to, raise that up but support it at the same time. That's not going to work. So I need a couple of thick blocks of wood. Uh, check in my stash. Ooh, let's get that out. Okay. So, actually not. No, that's no good. Okay, let's try So a couple of little blocks of wood here just to rest the workpiece on. And that should work very well. Now you're not going to see what I'm doing like that. Can you see? Yeah, kind of. The light's not great. Oh, incidentally, I have fitted those new LED lights up in here and it's made a huge difference. Uh, this, this is going to be a bit awkward for me to do this and show you, but... Basically what I'm going to be doing is just using the rasp to start to square off that hole. Now I am going to have to face this towards me so that I can see what I'm doing and do the job properly. But I'll show you momentarily uh, where I'm getting to. So these rasps work pretty fast. So I'm going to start just lightly at first, just, just to square the hole up. Not looking at making it bigger just yet. Uh, yeah, it's quite 
quite difficult to start this. There we go, that's a little bit easier. squaring up yet. I can do it. I can do it a bit from the outside, but I, I want to make sure I stay on that line. Okay. still within that square so I'm doing okay. <sighs> Alright, just double check, see if it's going to go through yet. I, I don't think so. No, but it's close. Well, it doesn't need a lot, a lot more to get that to go, start to go through. I can see where I've got to take a little bit of the wood away. Let's just show you where I'm up to at the moment. So you can see this, the hole is starting to square up. Uh, like I said, I don't want to take off too much material too quickly uh, and end up with it going in the wrong direction because it, this is critical when I'm doing this to do this, you know, left to right, backwards to forwards to make sure that the neck lines up properly side to side and backwards to forwards, backwards and forwards. So, um, you know, the, the initial part of starting this hole is quite important because if, if I get it wrong from the start, you know, it could be def difficult to correct any mistakes. Let me just try that again before I do any more. Okay, again, I can see where I need to take material off and it doesn't need a lot, really, to start to get that going through. Okay, so I'm not sure how well you're going to see that, but it has just started to fit inside that hole. So you can see, <coughs> time-wise, that's taken very little time at all. Now, while it's kind of stuck in that hole, I'm just going to check alignment, which uh, looks pretty good right now. I'm going to also check uh, for the break angle from the body to the neck, uh, which... So I'm putting the, the straight edge across the body and then going up the neck. Right now, that looks just about right. Got a just slight, slight little bit of break angle going backwards. That seems to be in the right position. Uh, we've still got that twist on the neck, um, but I'm going to need to sort that out on the top hole once this starts to go through. So I'm just going to take a little bit more meat off of that. Probably from the outside, yeah. <coughs> and how are we doing for time? Oh, not great. Okay. Right, let's just check that before I do any more. almost there. Right, so it's just about starting to go through that hole. So with a little bit more rasping just to get that to poke through, that's going to start to go through. <coughs> and then once I, once I get it to just start to emerge this side, then I can start to, you know, um, rasp sides and top bottom to, to get it to be, uh, you know, on the right angle. 
Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Dropped the camera. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to leave this video here now. Um, I'm not going to do much off camera. I'm just going to do a little bit more rasping just to get this to shaft to just start to come to this outside edge. Uh, and then I'm going to make another video to show how I keep going, keep going, keep going, take a little bit off each side and top and bottom to get the angle right. <coughs> now that's not going to take very long, but once I get it down so that the, the neck touches the body, um, hold on, let me just check that time. Once the, the neck starts to touch the body, then I've got to, you know, shape the underside of the neck to get it to sit level. Okay, so uh, that's the end of this video and the next one I'll be, you know, continuing to sink that neck into the body and it's not going to take very long. So in the meantime, please look after yourselves, look after each other. We will see you soon. Peace out.